Hello, welcome back. I am Weeder and this is Project Demon Slayers. The goal of this project is for me to cosplay the entire squad and this is vlog number 5 now. I finished another thing. Inosuke's head is done and today's vlog is going to cover all of that. Uh, I'll be honest, this project gave me mad allergies because I've got a really sensitive nose and we're obviously working with fur and uh, fake fur especially has the potential to get really messy. My nose is red AF right now so please excuse me for not showing my face at all this time. I'm gonna go straight into it right after plug alert. I want to say a big thank you to all of my lovely supporters on Patreon for making all of my videos and content possible. And hey, do you like seeing videos on the day they come out instead of 30 days afterwards and have a tutorial booklet to go with it? Why not become a supporter on Patreon? There are no pay tiers, just pledge whatever you can afford and you'll get the same content as everyone else. And you can also find all my cosplay books and patterns at akwudu.com. Okay, that's plug alert complete, let's make a pork boy. First things first, I drafted a pattern out of paper and then copied it onto 3mm thick EVA foam. Then I got some contact adhesive and glued all the darts together to make a sort of clumsy shoulder pauldron shape. Ta-da! Now I needed two of these, one left arm, one right arm, so prepare for trouble and make it double. Next I got more contact adhesive and spreaded it along the long edges of both halves. I needed to work really quickly here because the edges were so long and I did not want the contact adhesive to dry completely before I pressed it together. If the contact adhesive dries on both sides completely, the bond won't happen, so I needed it just right at a tack dryness. Which I got! Woohoo! With the glue ready, all I needed to do was match up the two halves to each other as carefully and as neatly as I could. Honestly, I didn't care too much about having neat foam work here, since everything's going to be covered by fur later anyway. After the left and right halves were joined together, I just gave the whole thing a little squeeze just to make that middle seam a little bit rounder. Yay. Ta-da! Congratulations, we've made a diglet! That's it! That's our head! Video over! <laughs> Jokes! I wish! Next was the eyes, so paper pattern first, then I placed it onto the head and traced it out. Inosuke's eyes are kind of all over the place on his face in the manga and the anime, so it's just a matter of preference where you want to place the eye holes. Then I took a sharp knife and I cut a bitch. Of course cutting the bitch very carefully, very slowly and always away from my fingers. Eye holes are my favourite type of holes. Oof, I don't know what came over me. Anyway, nose next. Draw out a paper place onto face, and cut out nose hole, another great type of hole. Next I made a snout, just a snout shape and a long rectangle, and glue them together and that was easy. And then one last piece of paper and that was for his piggy ears. Oh, isn't he cute as fuck. With the patterning and building done, it was time for some details using foam clay! From the original inventors of foam clay, Lumen's Workshop. I just squeezed myself a nug of it and smacked it onto the snout. Sculpted it into shape, then poked it with a pen for some textured effect. Mmm, snouty! The next trick I did was for his fangs. I scrunched up some aluminium foil, pressed it really hard onto the table to make a solid nug and made it into a tooth shape. Then I squeezed some foam clay really tightly around the foil nug and moulded it until it was a good fang worthy for a good boy. Foam parts done! Time for fur! Oh, the fake fur that I managed to find was such a nice natural grey colour with some bristly black details in it and it was so fluffy. So before cutting anything, I stretched the entire piece of fur onto the back half of my foam head. I made sure the hairs were pointing backwards, made sure I was happy with how it sat, then pinned it onto the foam head. 
After that, I flip the little shit over and marked out a line where I want the fabric to stop. Then it was cut a bitch o'clock again. So I took my trusty cutter and gently sliced it along the line that I marked out, being really careful to just cut the fabric backing and not any of the fur hairs underneath. After that, the time for delicacy was over! I grabbed that fabric backing and ripped it apart. Just let all my stress and all my frustrations out. It felt so good. Not to mention it's a great technique for ensuring there's no choppy cuts in your fur. Yay! One flowy panel for the back of the head. Once again, I whipped out my can of contact adhesive, and this time it's to secure the fur onto the foam head. For this step, I used contact adhesive because I have such a big can of it, and it's my favourite. But a lot of other glues work just as perfectly for this, like fabric glue, super glue, clear craft glue, yoohoo glue, and spray contact adhesive if you can find it and afford it. Sometimes you'll find the edge of the fur sits a bit wrinkly, just give it a gentle yank into place and then pat it back down. And we mustn't forget to give the good boy a pat when we're happy with him. After a good pat, we need to fix up the mess that's the back of his head. I gathered all the excess that was in the back of the head, pinched them as neatly as I can into two folds, and pinched any other excess on the side of the face the same way as well. Then, of course, poked a pin in it to hold it in place. Honestly, if you can eyeball it good enough, you don't have to pin, but I think pinning is really important. Because it's really useful to see where everything sits before sewing or gluing anything down. You want to decide whether you're happy with something and whether you want to make adjustments, rather than making it all the way to the end and realising you don't like it. Thankfully, I was happy with it pretty quickly and I could move on with my life. The next step was to glue the folds in place and then hand sew them. Hand sewing got defeated off screen because I was too busy dying to film, but yay, Pork Boy is getting really fluffy now. The rest of the face was really easy. I just cut out a batch of little fur patches and then attached it onto the face little by little. The only thing I had to remember to look out for was the direction of the fur hairs. Everything had to sprout outwards from the center of the nose hole. From here on out, it was repeat till cry, same, 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 same. After that, another easy part, the snout. It was just a strip of fur wrapped around the foam snout. Then I shoved the snout into the nose hole and fluffed it out. After this, I glued the nose into place by shoving a hot glue gun into the inside of the head. I like to avoid gluing on the top side of the fur whenever possible because it gets so messy. The final piece of fur I had to deal with were the ears. On the top side of his ear, he has a cute pink tip, so I cut some tips out of pink fur, then joined it onto some grey ears with the tips cut off. The top side is all pink, so that's just pink. Move over, Neko Mimis. Pork Mimis are in. And that was all the fur done, and I was so relieved because fur is so messy, and I'm glad it's over. After that, I was on the home stretch. Time to paint some eyeballs. I made these eyeballs the same way I made the fangs. Scrunched up some aluminium foil into a solid nug, and covered it with foam clay. I did the gradient painting by hand by using a mixture of silver, white, pale blue, and metallic blue. As you can probably see, I like to paint the middle tone first, then I jot some dark tones in there, and then I jot some lighter tones in there, and then I blend them all together, and I repeat until I get a gradient I like. It's such a soothing process, I love painting by hand. Next thing I painted was the fangs. I did an undercoat with a colour called Raw Umber. I did this on a cold day so unlike usual it took forever to dry. But eventually it did dry and it was time for some mad dry brushing. So the colours I had were Burnt Sienna, Raw Umber, White and Opal. I just took turns dry brushing each colour onto the fangs until I got the depth and gradients that I liked.
Then as a finishing touch, I highlighted the tips, just the tips, with a touch of white. Mmm, toothy! My next mission was to make sure Pork Boy can see, so I got some black mesh fabric and glued it to the inside of the eye hole with some hot glue. Pretty straightforward stuff. Yay for vision! The end is so close! Next, I trimmed a little bold spot for the fangs to be glued on. Whipped out the trusty hot glue gun again, and glued the fang onto the little bolt spot. Oh, look at his cute little nugs. The next thing I attached was really fun, magnetic eyeballs. So I just got a couple of fridge magnets and glued it onto the back of the foam eyeball and made a magnet sandwich. Let's see how that turned out. Plop. Looks pretty good, but wait. <gasps> Hours of entertainment right there. The final task, not sure why I left it last, was painting the snout. I sealed the foam with PVA glue before painting, and of course it was on a cold day again. Then I mixed me a really cute pink for the base colour for the snout. Then I dry brushed a tiny bit of brown everywhere to give him a muddy look, cause he's a muddy boy. Finally, paint the nostrils nice and dark, and you will have one complete pork boy! Oof, yay! I'm so happy with it! And I look pretty alright in it, so double yay! And that's how I made Inosuke's head. Thank you so much for watching! Please hit a like and subscribe if you found this one useful, and I'll see you next session.